Are you ready to do some art today? Yes. Excellent. Who remembers, thumbs up if you remember yesterday when we talked about a very special painting. Okay, very good. Do you remember the name of the artist of that painting? Oh. Samuel? Oh. Starts with an R. His last name starts with an R. Rousseau. Rousseau, very good. Before the lesson, we looked at the poster uh, of Henri Rousseau's exotic landscape, and we used that to review all of the elements of art and the principles of design. So I wonder if you remember all of the elements of art. Why don't you think, pair, share, whisper to each other, and see if you can remember all of the elements of art. I think between all of us, we're gonna get all of the elements of art. Who can tell me one element? Space. Four. Five. Texture. You did a great job remembering all the elements of art. That's excellent. Okay, so here we see them again. We've got line, shape, color, value, form, texture, and space. So when we think about line, it says here different tools make different kinds of lines. Can you tell me some of the different kinds of lines artists can create? This lesson fit very well into the grade two curriculum. The students were to create a two-dimensional work of art based on their observations of nature. Students will demonstrate an understanding of composition using principles of design to develop a narrative based on a theme, which is the underwater theme. There's two different kinds of shapes we talked about. I wonder if you remember the two different words. Jeff, what do you think? Triangle. And those triangular shapes, so those um, shapes with corners, maybe they could be rectangular, or they may be irregular shapes. Do you remember what those are called? We looked at those when we looked at Picasso's Weeping Woman. She had all of those types of shapes. Ty? Geometric, excellent. We do review all of the elements of design, so all of the fundamental concepts, but then we focus primarily on the color, um, space and texture for this lesson and so that was the purpose of instruction for this lesson. Get ready. Are you ready to, to see what artwork you're going to do today? Yes. Okay, I think you're really going to like this one because you get to do painting and you get to do a really fancy thing too with tin foil. So I know we looked at an exotic landscape yesterday but I thought we might make a different type of um, exotic work, an underwater scene. Would that sound like fun? Yes. Okay. So just like with Rousseau, he had that cool green forest and much of the, the um, picture was green, but then he had those pops of orange that would contrast with the green, right? And that's what we're going to do as well. We're going to do nice cool water background and then we're going to do some brightly colored warm fish. Which fish you think is closest? Haley, which one do you think is close? You think this one looks like it's the closest fish? Thumbs up if you agree. I see Mohammed put his thumbs up right away. Excellent. Okay, and which fish is far, appears to be the farthest away? Hmm, I'll, I'll, you know what? I'm going to pick Jalen. You're, you're close to the front here. Go ahead. Which fish seems far away? Very good. And how did the artist show that? Mohammed? Overlapping. That's right, excellent. So we see overlapping here in these three fish in the front. This is like the foreground. And in the background here, how do we know that these fish are farther away? James? They're little, right? You know, they could be little fish, but it gives the illusion that they're farther away. They make choices based on the elements and what we've discussed. So how to use color and how they will use the, the shapes and texture. The students were able to explore a variety of materials. So they used watercolor and salt, and then um, using tin foil and the marker. So it was a multimedia artwork, and they got to experiment with those different tools, which they don't often get to use. Oh, that's very nice, Haley, nice and light. Watery looking, beautiful. And I'm gonna do drop, drop, why do you think I might do this? Mohammed? To get the texture of the ocean. That's right, the texture, the nice watery texture. You can think of bubbles. Just pick up a pinch of salt in your fingers. Okay, and just drop a little bit of salt around your painting. 
Do you remember what I, I told you the salt does to the paint? Zane, do you remember? It light. That's right, it will pull the color up from the paint. By dropping it in little areas, I'm gonna get some, some lights and some darks forming, okay? It's gonna give me light areas. Very carefully bring your paintings over to the drying rack. Your fish are gonna be very simple. Okay, I just have a part of an oval here and then I might do a little bit of a triangular shaped fin. Okay, I can draw a fin on the top if I want. Okay, or maybe even a little one at the bottom. So if I think of an angelfish too, they're more like, a, like maybe like a big triangle. Okay, we're gonna have nice soft curves for those fish. If James doesn't, James doesn't mind, I'm just gonna show you some of his sketches. And you can see that James has a variety of different shapes and thumbs up if you can see a variety of different sizes as well. So large fish, medium fish and small fish. Some students have some good ideas of some fish and they have maybe even practiced drawing fish and some kids need a little bit of extra help just to get the idea of the size and the shape. So it, they may choose to <clears throat> use these shapes or it may just help them with their own drawings. I would say about five fish is a good number, okay? Modeling is really important when doing an art lesson, with, especially with younger students. Not all students hear the instructions in the same way. Some are better at, at listening to instructions and following along. Others really have to see what they're going to do first. So lay your tin foil down on the, the mesh, I'll call it, okay? Tape it down. I'm gonna give tape to each group. It's really important that you tape this down. Look at that. Push. Stay inside the lines, just like you were coloring. You can go right around into those corners. So look at that. What do these fish look like they have now? Texture. And what do these look like? Scales? Give me my money. Keep it nice and flat. Very good. Oh, I see some nice use of lines here in your designs. That's good. Okay, because remember we're looking for nice bright tropical fish, exotic fish, right? I'm just going to demonstrate using yours. Is that okay, Omar? Okay. So we can remove the tin foil from the mesh. Okay, see how the, the tin foil starts to bend a little bit? Just try and keep it as best as you can, as smooth as you can. Do your best. Okay. The most challenging thing was picking them up because you could um, make the texture, use your texture. What things did we talk about when we talked about how an artist shows space? Which two things are we going to be trying to do here? James, what's one? Overlapping. That's right, overlapping is an excellent technique artists use. And what's the other technique? Yeah. Um, the, the, small, the small ones go to the back and the, the medium ones go to the medium and the big ones go to the bottom. I have a smart board in my class, so I'm fortunate to be able to have interactive lessons that help the students further understand the elements and the principles of design. Hmm. Wow, we've got overlapping. We've got small fish to the top of the picture plane and a large fish to the bottom of the picture plane. We have used the space nicely, I think. What I'd like you to do is experiment with your fish, okay? Put them on the paper, arrange them, move them around, ask the person beside you what they think. Make sure you're happy with your arrangement before you start to glue them down. I have put the students into small groups and this helps me to manage the different um, speeds at which students work and, and that the different abilities that they work. I try to have peer helpers at each group and they will provide a lot of support to their peers and we work together to, tr to make sure that everyone is successful. So we, at each group I try to make sure that there's a, a very good helper and someone who will understand the instructions well and guide the others.
What were you going to say, Omar? Um, if you put two blood together, that, that will be looking like a fish. Oh, okay, so it's, maybe is it hard to see the, the two fish when they're together? I like the way Zane is helping the people at his group remember to use overlapping. That's a good idea. And the most hard challenging thing was to glue them on so you don't put that much glue. My students love creating art. They look very forward to any art lesson and I think having a variety of materials for them to choose from makes it all the more exciting. So they love it when they get to use pastels, whether it's chalk pastels or oil pastels and paint. Whenever the paint comes out, it's always very exciting. My words of encouragement are to think of for teachers to think about what they are interested in. So for instance, one of my colleagues is very interested in music and he collects albums and he is fascinated by album covers. And we had a discussion once and I said, well, why don't you have your students create album covers? And he's been doing that and he loves that and he gets, so he is very excited about it. So I just encourage teachers to find what interests them and you can, they can very easily turn that into a lesson and inspire their own class to create. I guess you could say my interest was very much in art history when I was in university. So that's why you see me taking the great works of art of different Canadian artists and different artists worldwide and from different time periods because I am interested in studying that art. And students, especially young students, aren't exposed to a variety of different art. And when they see the posters and when they see the different artwork, they're usually very interested and they love talking about it. Just like me. Because